Okay, what I'm going to do in this video now is to start building the graphical front end for Myth TV to use. Now, I have to admit, I always thought that I'd read that Myth TV came with its own minimal um, Windows manager called Evil WM, um, but I couldn't see any. Uh, sort of, um, any reference to that at all when I was uh, researching for this project um, whether it's something that just gets enabled automatically it's not immediately obvious I, I don't know but I did find I had to have an existing uh, window manager running to actually get Myth TV up and running so it's not a problem because whenever I build a GUI I always build TWM um, just because it's nice and simple to get going it's only um, one or two packages and it's a, it's an easy way to test the GUIs working correctly so it's something I always install and always have around uh, irrespective of what what the final window manager or desktop environment is that I'm using so it's, it's no big deal um, it also means you've got a GUI to do stuff in, you know, either troubleshoot or build more stuff in Linux from scratch. So it's it's an advantage to have it anyway, I think, rather than just building a GUI and then go straight into building Myth TV and finding something's not working, you haven't got a graphical environment to, to test stuff. So it's, um, as I say, no big deal at all. In, in, in fact, it's probably is, it's definitely an advantage to do that. So what I'm going to be doing is going through all of the instructions for building um, the GUI up in the Beyond Linux and Scratch book. So I've just got to find that. Uh, yes, yeah, this section here is part four or section four, uh, sorry, six, um, chapter 24. So you can see there's various parts so we'll be installing some of the libraries additional libraries for the graphical environment but we'll be installing all of this chapter and you'll see at the end it does include TWM plus a few other bits and bobs as well um, obviously X term you need because you'll need a um, a shell to, to work through so let's start with that I've got the windows up here with a connection, an SSH connection back into the box. So again, this is the remote machine. Um, even when the windowing system is up, um, what I'll do is I'll test it quickly, um, but I'll carry on building uh, remotely because I won't have a browser. I'm not going to be installing a browser. I'm, uh, I'm not sure even if that will require many more packages. Uh, although having said that, it probably would be advantageous to have a graphical uh, browser just for maintenance purposes if you needed to download something or browse on the TV machine. Um, so I might look into that, but it's certainly not something that I've factored in in doing these videos. Uh, purely because it's it's unnecessary to actually get MFTV TV going. But it's something that you might want to do. Um, so... Xorg, it's quite a big task to do this. Um, it's probably about it's probably about half the work required to get Myth TV going. Um, the remaining packages of that, uh, the remaining half are just patch packages that are specific uh, that we need to install specifically for Myth TV. So once we've got the GUI working, we've probably done about half the work that needs needs to be done. Although not half the work in terms of time because there's a couple of big packages that we need to install for Myth TV uh, specifically which are Qt and Qt Web Engine they take some time to compile so it might make this bit installing the GUI is probably only about a quarter maybe a third of the time uh, involved in building so anyway let's crack on um, so there's information there about it. Let's just read it quickly in case we need to do anything. 
Yeah, basically, it's the usual thing. They say they it's such a complex. They've, what they've done, they've broken down all the components of XORG into individual modules, and it's quite laborious to work out what modules you need. So what they tend to do is just install the whole lot. Um, it says sudo's a so basically, they say to install wget, obviously to fetch the files which we've done, install sudo to help installing, and all this so they recommend setting the no password configuration which we've done. So if I do sudo ls, for example, you can see it's not asked me for the password uh, when it's executed that command. Um, and it says about installing XORG, you might want to install it into an alternate prefix rather than the uh, user prefix. Um, and it does say only the opt prefix or the user prefix adheres to the current FHS guidelines if that uh, is important to you. The BLFS editors recommend using the user prefix. I'm sure they used to recommend using the opt prefix um, so being as this is probably an installation you're not ever going to upgrade um, I think we'll probably go with the user prefix so let's put this command in first forward slash user close the quotes and then there's a config they some config configuration they put into a variable as well because it's just reused continually. So let's just echo those two to make sure they actually do contain what we expect them to contain. So user prefix there and sorry, user there, that's the first one, and the one beginning prefix equals user there. Uh, is the second one that, that looks all sane. So create an etc profile dx or configuration file containing these variables as the root user. So I'll have to do sudo minus e um, su and let's just echo those two variables again to make sure they're still valid. As the root user, yes, so the environment's been carried across, which is what the minus E does. So now we can just copy that again, copy and paste that in. And once again, we can just double check that that looks okay. It's important to check these because if these are wrong, then either the installation will break or things will get put where they shouldn't be put or where you don't expect them to be. So that looks all all right. Um, if you've installed sudo, which you have, ensure the prefixes are available in the sudo environment. So I guess this helps in not having to provide the minus E or um, if you log in as a user, it doesn't get these variables set. If you decide to use the standard prefix user, you must omit the remainder of this page and continue at util macros. Okay, so normally I do put it in the opt, but it seems like the, as I say, the editors are recommending that it's put into the user prefix. So if you have decided to put it into the opt prefix, you do need to run all these remaining commands. So we start off with the first package, which, oops, which is util macros. Let's go to the BLFS directory. There's the stuff I did in the previous video. And we'll start by installing util macros, right? I'll have to start remembering to highlight the URLs. Okay, so the XORG build environment is the bit we've just been doing to set up the uh, variables and the config and so on. So that should all be in place. So as before, all we do is extract these packages 
and run the instructions. And a lot of these earlier packages are quite simple and quite similar. So that's that package, nice and simple. So move on to Xorg Proto. So it says the requirement util macros, which is what we've already done. The optional, I'm not really going to build optional, as I said yesterday on the previous video. Um, there may be the odd one that I'll install, which is optional, either because I want to or because I know that it's needed by Myth TV. Um, but otherwise, I'm not going to bother. Um, as we come across packages that are required by Myth TV, I will. Myth TV, I will mention them although as I say later on when we come to build Miss TV I'll be trying to compile it and letting it tell me what it needs. It's just that I've cross referenced what the Miss TV page the build page has shown as requirements. Um in fact if I show you that now uh I'm not sure what it is software installation building from source that's what we need again you can see this is these instructions are for build 32 not for the current build 33.1 which we're building with or going to be building with so there could be some changes but basically if we go to that this shows you all the packages that are required for Miss TV um, but these are packages in the format of something like Debian um, these aren't packages that, that we're dealing with, you know, that are direct from source. These are the sort of Debian type. You can tell because they're all like dash dev, dash dev. Um, and some of these packages are actually split. So we will come to build Qt5 and Qt5 probably actually includes, uh, for example, those two packages. Um, and this package might just be headers for MySQL that Qt5 uses, something like that. So it's it can only be used as a guide for what we're doing. Um, but it's it's good information anyway. Um, you probably find a lot of these won't be installing. Things like NASM, yeah, we definitely do install that. Um, again, Qt5 QMake, that's probably part of the Qt5 core and it'll get installed anyway. So when you look at this, don't get too hung up about uh, not having this pack package or not being able to find it. Um, there's also runtime dependencies. Um, in fact, I don't think I installed any of these because, yeah, these are for MythWeb, that's right, and I didn't install that part of MythTV. Um, I, I can't remember what MythWeb is now. I don't use it, but I'm not sure if it's access to the MythTV server from a remote web page or if it provides a web browser within in the package in, in this TV itself. I, I can't remember now. Um, but as you'll see, when we come to it, there are lots of extra plugins that can be installed. So these are the packages. Like I say, as we come across packages that I know need, are needed for Miss TV, TV, I will mention them. So anyway, let's get back to this. Uh, Xorg Proto, let's extract it. And just put all these commands in. There's no extra um, optional commands if you'd like to put in, but there are explanations for what some of the configure commands mean or what they do. Okay, that's done. That's nice and simple. Once again, I can, I'll just check this prefix. It should be there. Uh, just for peace of mind, yes, it is there. Okay, that's done. So we now move on to libxau.
Once again, the only requirement is what we've already done. We've just built And once again, the instructions are quite simple. Right, so it's a test for this one, so let's run that. I think these tests, when they do exist, are quite straightforward. Yes, they are. Okay, that's that one done. So libx dmcp is next. And again, there's some optional packages here. Um, actually, libxslt. Let me just check my list. I can't remember if that gets installed or not. Let me look for it. Yes, it does get installed, and I'll put it to be installed later on, so we could install that now. It needs libxml2 right. and docbook xml and xsl nons which are required at runtime. So being there a runtime requirement, I'm not going to install them now. I'll install them later on when we do actually need them. So um, we're doing XDM. CP, right, I'll just, if you don't mind bearing with me, I just need to reorganise the order I've put these into build, because we're doing XML2 next. And then libxslt. And then libxdmcp. Right, okay. So libxml2, which we're going to build next, is actually a requirement for Myth TV. Um, Oh, actually, we build ICU as well. Right, this is getting more and more complicated, um, which is always the case with BLFS. It's deciding where to break these chains. I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll build it in the original order I was going to build it. It's probably simpler. Uh, or is it? No, no, let's carry on doing what I was going to do. LibXSLT, XML. Yeah, ICU. The trouble is ICU, no, I know, yeah, needs lots of dependencies itself. LLVM. Right, so. LLVM. Uh, I see you. LLVM. And LLVM. So the, 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 I think LLVM takes quite a while to compile as well. So it's going to take a little bit longer now than I thought. LLVM needs CMake. And there's a circular dependency here. We've got libxml required for LLVM. So I'm going to have to resolve that as well. Um, oh, it is optional though, so that's all right. I'll leave that. No, I'll put it in because we're going to build it. And then we'll have to rebuild it, I think. No, I'll leave it out as it's optional. 
I uh, won't get too deep with this. C make needs curl. And lib archive and lib uv and ng http. Right, they're recommended. Right, I'm not going to do NGHTTP2, am I? Uh, NGHTT. Oh, yes, it is a requirement. I've actually built that in a different place as well. So let's move that. Uh, let's load all these up. Needs a little bit right. I'm going to have to build libxml2 as that's a recommendation, and there it's needed. That's lib archive. So that needs libxml2. And LZO. Right, LZO is actually a Myth TV dependency as well. And we need Nettle. all right it's there yeah I'm changing the order of quite a few of the tools that I had XML yeah what I'll do is I'll install libxml2 without ICU and then when we've built ICU I'll rebuild libxml2 I think that's probably the best way of doing it uh, especially as a, a recommended package. So, ng8, what does this need? That's recommended, right? So, it looks like I am going to build libxml2 first. So, rebuild. XML2 uh, and that's for which package is this NGHTTP Okay, so I've just got to move NGHTTP on my list. Uh, NGHTTP two dash one dot five two dot zero. Right, let's get going then. So libxml2 is the next one to build. As I say, I'll rebuild this once we've got ICU installed. So let's get going again. Um, you have to excuse me if I do take a little 
pause to update my list, but being as I'm changing the order, it's probably more accurate way of building rather than the first. Well, it was actually the second iteration of the list before I started this video. So let's copy that. Uh, that's highlighted. Okay. Um, right, let's download the test suite as well. Probably a good idea. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to add in the with ICU switch to use ICU for better Unicode support, so we'll do that next time round. But apart from that, um, it looks like, yeah, we can just copy and paste the configure command in. Done configuring, build it. Okay, so it's built successfully. Let's extract the tests and then run the tests with this command. Okay, that's complete. Let's check the results. No errors. 15 errors were expected. So that looks successful. So it says something about if the machine is used as a server, shut it down beforehand. Obviously it's not. We're building it up from scratch. So we'll just install the package as it is. So that's done for the first build of libxml which will allow us to build other packages with some functionality of libxml2. So now we're going to build nghttp2 building full package instead of only the main libraries. Okay, yeah. So let's copy that in for the configure. And 
and build it. You can see it's not picked up a lot of libraries there. Um, shared library, which is good. So let's build that. It does say there aren't any tests because it needs CUnit, which is not in the BLFS book. So we'll just install it. And that's done. So next we've got libuv, that hasn't got any dependencies at all. So the sh autogen command fails if the AC local environment variable is set as specified in XORG 7. If it is used, AC local needs to be unset for this package and then reset for other package. There's a couple of packages like this. I do remember I've had problems with AC local. Um, I've never known how to fix it. So obviously this is caught up with the editors and they've put these cautions in now. So as far as I'm aware, we haven't yet set it. Uh, no, there's nothing... set there so we don't need to unset everything anything yet but there may be a point where one of these packages has the same warning and we do need to unset it and the key thing is to remember to set it back after it's done right so that's done let's run the tests Okay, one test passed, it says, despite seeming to do more, te more tests than one. Uh, so let's now install it, being that's all successful. And that's that one. So that was libuv. Let's just put that into my list. So the next one I've got is Nettle. So it's only got Valgrind as a optional package for testing. Uh, Falcon is quite a large package I remember as I remember to install so not be bothering with that. So simple configure and make to build it. and run some tests. Okay, all three tests passed and all 112 tests passed as well, so that's good. So 
So let's run these commands to install the package, and that's done. So that's net all complete. Now let's do LZO. And again, this is uh, a requirement for Myth TV, so we've got to install this anyway at some point. So there's two different tests here. Oh, sorry, I've got to build it first. Okay, so there's two different ways, or well, two different tests we've got to do. First run make check, and that's successful. And now we run make test to run the full set of suites. Okay, okay to install LZO and that's done. So that's LZO. We've got libxml2 again to install and we'll do that later. So libarchive, so let's just check. We've got Netto installed, we've got LZO and we've got libxml2, so we can do this libarchive next. Once again, we can configure. Um, there is actually a switch mentioned here, or two actually, without XML2 and without Nettle, so it does say they're optional. Um, but I guess the fact they've given instructions that don't include these two is probably best that they are installed, which is what we have done. Yeah, it does actually say that libxml is the preferred package and Netto is the preferred package, so it's good that we've installed them anyway because of that. So let's build this. Okay, now let's run the tests.
Okay, so that's finished building or finished testing. We can install it now. And there's one command or one file we need to remove. And that's complete. So that was lib archive. Now we've got curl to install. Recommended make CA. Uh, there's a few other options there. I'm not sure if we actually need any of them later on. Oh, libssh is one we install. Uh, let me check all of these actually. CRS, I don't think we do that one. I guess we do. Okay, so we need that. GNU TLS, I think we need. Uh, I think that's a requirement by. Yes, it's a requirement by Myth TV, so we may as well install that now. There's not going to be many packages to install for Myth TV in the end at this rate because we'll have installed mo most of them at this point. Um, libidn. No, we haven't got that one. libpsl. No, and yes, libssh. Yeah, okay. So, uh, see, I was going to tell us lib SSH. We've done NGHTTP. Uh, we don't need any of the others. So, let's do lib SSH next. And there's a patch here. Oh, this has got requirements as well. Uh, all three are required for the test suite. Right, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. As I said, I'm not going to install packages purely for a te test suite. And this is absolutely necessary. Um, what I will do is check that lib gcrypt. Lib gcrypt. No, we haven't got that, and I'm sure GNU PG is not a requirement, but I'll check that anyway. No, okay. So we'll have a go at running the test suite and either fail miserably or it will just test part of the package. So, oh, what have I done here? I haven't tied it up. Lib archive, have I? Okay, so now let's extract lib ssh. And the first command is to patch the package and then configure the build. And run the build. Make check. That's all complete. And finally we can do make install. All done. So that's lib SSH2 complete. So the next one we've got to do is GNU TLS. We've got Nettle installed. We've got make CA lib uni string that might be a requirement. It's certainly a recommendation, so I imagine it is. Yes, it is here. 
in my list that is, so I'm going to just reorganize the order of play. Libuni string, Lib Tazen. Oh yes, we've already installed that. Okay, that was in the previous video. And P11 kit's already installed as well. Um, I think I've already looked for LibIDN, haven't I? Yeah, we've got that. Oh, we don't need it rather. LibSecComp. Yeah, I don't think any of these are needed. That's all right then. So we've just got to install... Note that you do not need to install LibTaz and a version of ship a version shipped in the GNU TLS tab will be used instead. Right, well, the thing is, Miss TV does require have a requirement specifically for GNU TLS, so we have got to install it anyway. So let's do lib uni string first. Optional text live, that's a massive package with lots of dependencies, and it's only to rebuild the documentation, so I'm not going to bother with that. So lib uni string is the next package so fairly straightforward Build package. Okay, that's done. Now let's run the test. It says it takes one SBU, so I'll time that. It's probably going to be a couple of minutes. Yeah, that's about a minute or so. So that's all passed successfully, the ones that ran. So now let's install the package. And that's libunistring done. So next is GNU TLS. And as I said, 
previously, this is actually a requirement for Myth TV, so we have to install it, um, despite what it said about um, not needing this if we've got LibTazin installed, which we have got. So we've got all the dependencies installed, that's okay. So let's run the configure. Now you can see there's some other options there. Um, I'm not running the OpenSSL compatibility switch and we have got P11 kit so we don't need that and we're not going to use the bundled one we're we're going to use the system one that we've just built it says here use this switch if you're not installed libuni string so we'll just configure exactly as it's got there Okay, let's run make and build the package. Okay, so that's built. Now let's run the tests.
Okay, that's all built. Uh, sorry, checked. And there wasn't any errors that went past. Uh, we can just double check. Nothing there. I think that was the first report. And there's another one there. Yeah. So that's all successful. Let's now install. And that's GNU TLS complete. So now we move on to CRS. Requires, okay, requires CMake. I didn't see that before. Um, and CMake is two back. So is it curl and need CRS, is it? Yeah. And CMake needs curl. Okay. So what I have to do is to install CMake next. Um, and then that will give us, it looks like we'll have to install CMake twice actually. Um, that will give CRS CMake which we can build, then we can build curl, then you'll have to build CMake again. It's a bit unfortunate because it's not one of the quickest. It's certainly not one of the slowest, but it means probably another half hour added on. Um, we are actually installing Qt, but that's a lot later on. So that's something I'm not going to bother with. Otherwise, we'd have to build all the dependencies for Qt. Um, and it's only for the Qt-based GUI, which is not needed anyway. So that's not a problem. So, yeah, let's do CMake without curl. We've got all the other recommended. Um, if this fails, unfortunately, we have to do curl first. In fact, is that an idea to install curl? Yeah, that might be a better way of doing things, is to install curl. Oh no, this this needs CMake, sorry, yes, that's right. That's why we need it. Yep, so. Let's fetch that. And extract it. Oh, is that there is actually a separate switch to enable the QT based GUI for CMake, so that's obviously something we can we would leave out anyway, uh, so it's not particularly necessary. So let's run this said first, and then the bootstrap, and see what other options there are. System libs we're using, no system JSON, CP, blue bar hatch. Right, so we need to put in no system curl because we haven't got curl installed. So a bundled version will be used. So we could get away with just building CMake like this, but uh, I don't see why. If we're going to install curl anyway, we can just rebuild CMake to use the system one. Um, and I believe they tend to recommend that the system ones are used anyway. 
And they were performing similar moves with multiple jobs at one time. So let's add this parallel option in as well. Okay, that's bootstrapped. Now we'll build it.
So that all ran. Just got to change the number of parallel threads that can be tested. And time that, see how long it takes, and wait for that to finish.
Okay, so that's completed. 100% test passed, so that's good. Let's now install. So in theory, you could leave this as it is because that's all that's required, but um, as curl is going to be installed anyway for something else, I can't remember what. Um, might as well just rebuild this to use the system curl when it's been um, built. So that's CMake first round installed. Let's tidy that up next. Now we can build C arrows. So separate build directory. And this is what we need to see make. make and install uh, so to make install yep and that's complete okay so I'll just update my list and the next one should be on to is curl so I've got all the dependencies for curl now. Let's download it. So let's copy the configure command. Let's just check the Explanations for the commands. So let's open this as well. Okay, so one thing we could do is just to disable the SSL and use GNU TLS in, instead. Um, it's probably unnecessary. And we'd have to put this in as well. We could add in libssh support because SSH2 because we've got that. Yes, yeah, so by default. So we've got that library. So we can use that. And we've now got arrows. Oh, it's not widely resolved. Okay, so Sierra's might not have been required then in the end. Oh, because it was optional. Okay, so maybe that's something to bear in mind in future that Sierra's is perhaps not a requirement. And therefore curl at this point is not a requirement. Um, but as I'm pretty sure CMake is required later on anyway, so would have to have built it at some time. So I'll just build with those um, options. Okay, so now let's build the package Okay, that's built. Let's run make test.
Okay, that's finished testing. Um, of the ones that were tested, everything reported. Okay, so that's good enough. There were a few things. It's funny because it does say if Sambra's installed some test relating to the Python model in packet will be reported as missing. Um, I saw that anyway, but obviously we haven't installed Samba at all, so I'm not quite sure what happened there. But anyway, the package reports 100% pass. So now let's install curl. Put in all these commands. And that's curl finished. Okay, so what we need to do now is to reinstall CMake and um, apologies, it seems like it may have been unnecessary to um, install Sierra's. I, I thought it was needed later on, but I'm not sure. So um, we'll find out anyway. Um, certainly if it wasn't required by anything else, then we could have built CMake straight away. Uh, well, in fact, we could have built curl straight away without CRS and then CMake without having to rebuild it. So let's rebuild this now anyway to take the fact that we've got a system-wide curl that can be used. As I say, I, th I knew this would be um, a little bit making up as it goes along because the versions have changed of both LFS and um, Myth TV. Although we haven't gotten to Myth TV yet, and it's all about LFS, um, I'm hoping there won't be any problems with Myth TV, but there is a, a possibility. Um, okay, so C make. So previously we ran the bootstrap command with no system curl. We've got a system curl now. So the only command we need to add on is the, uh, is it parallel? Yeah. Parallel equals four to bootstrap with four cores. Just to speed it up a bit.
Okay, so that has bootstrapped the compiler. Let's now run make to build it.
Okay, that's finished building. Let's run the tests again. So I just change the number of threads that this can run on to four and wait a few minutes for it to finish.
Okay, that's finished. Um, all tested okay again, so let's install CMake again. And that's done.